Hi, welcome to the Damien and Devlin Show, and this is our review of The Room, a 2003 movie directed by Tommy Wiseau, starring Tommy Wiseau, produced by Tommy Wiseau, written by Tommy Wiseau, also starring Greg Sestestro and Juliet Daniel. You forgot, it's also directed by Tommy Wiseau, and if you haven't seen this movie, you're just a bunch of chickens. For those of you who don't know this movie, this is now considered to be one of the best worst bad movies of all time. It's considered one of the worst, but it has become an entertaining film that people love to watch. It's got cults uh, all over it. People go to midnight showings where they show plastic spoons, play football, and yell inappropriate things at the screen. And if you don't know The Room, you should know The Room because it is a great bad movie and recently a movie came out called The Disaster Artist which was actually a good movie about a bad movie kind of like when they did Ed Wood with Tim Burton they made a good movie about a bad director so this is very similar in that way and a lot of you know I love bad movies but I know Damien sometimes has trouble with cult movies and camp so I thought I'm gonna kind of introduce him to him a little bit at a time, but we went real deep and big on this one, and I decided it was time to subject him to the room. Now, don't think I'm totally cruel. He actually wanted to see the d disaster artist. I almost <laughs> forgot. He wanted to see that movie, and I said, no, 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 you got to see the source that's behind it. And was it a good call? Well, the results definitely are in. I do have breast cancer. As for what it regards to the movie, you know... Where do you even start? Where do you even begin with this movie? I, I I don't know where to begin. I just, what is this movie? Is it a movie? Like, what is it trying to be, if at all? Like, you said Tom Wiseau recently came out and said, oh, you know, this is a comedy. But it's totally not <laughs> designed to be a comedy. What is this movie? It's just constantly going through my head. I don't know where to begin. Yeah, Tommy Wiseau had the idea to write a play, and the play turned into a 500-page book. When he couldn't get it published, he decided he was going to come up with the money and make it a movie. And somehow he managed to get $6 million, and somehow this movie cost $6 million, <laughs> which we won't even go into it. The movie played at only a couple wow. theaters in L.A., and it was only going to play for two weeks and nobody went to go see the film except the odd person went to go and then people would say have you seen this movie and then people would go see it how bad it was now the biggest expense in this movie was probably this billboard that they rented out and if you can go check out on you know on google or any search engine find the billboard for the room it's just this ominous picture of his face over this hollywood main drag and he actually, even though the movie only played for a couple of months, he actually rented it out for five years at like $5,000 a month because it was such a prime location. He said, well, we'll be selling DVDs and Blu-rays eventually. So, And it became a, a thing. People would want to get their picture taken with the <laughs> billboard. And then eventually people, word of mouth, people went to start seeing the film and couldn't believe how bad this movie was. You got to give the guy credit. He decided he wanted to fund it himself, and nobody really knows where he got the money from. Some people say he was independently wealthy. Some people he sold, like, leather coats that he got from <laughs> Korea. Like, there's so many weird stories. But anyhow, you got to give the guy credit for trying to make something artistic. And yes, just like Damien said, he's now come out saying, oh, no, I was attempting to make a bad comedy. But you can tell watching this, he thought this was going to be the most dramatic love triangle. Uh, I wish I could tell you what the movie's about. It, <laughs> it's basically a love triangle. It's basically about a guy who's in love with a woman, and this woman realizes she doesn't love him anymore, and decides that, you know, she loves his best friend. Now, throw in a whole bunch of subplots, like breast cancer, <laughs> drugs, the kid next door, people coming over randomly having sex. There's just so many subplots that go nowhere. But you know what? It's still an entertaining film. 
Do you have any positives, or do you even not know how to talk about this film? <laughs> no. <laughs> there are no positives here. <laughs> Absolutely zero. Uh, zero. Zero positives. Like, I, within five minutes, four minutes, 53 seconds, there was a sex scene. I a didn't long, even know drawn out sex. Scene. I didn't even know the characters' names at this point. <laughs> and there was a sex scene with the most god awful R and B soundtrack. And the worst part of these sex scenes, because there are there are five of them, I counted at least five. Four of which happened within the first thirty minutes of the movie, but five total. The worst part of it is not the R and B. Like that's bad enough, but it is. But just over the. You are my rose, you are my rose. <laughs> you have the, ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, just constantly over time. <laughs> yeah, usually they put the songs to cover that, but no, they decided we can play the songs and still have the grunting. <laughs> Not to mention there are some weird positions where I don't, <laughs> I don't think he was hitting parts he was trying to hit, if you know what I mean. I'm trying to be nice. There's many times that I think he invented a naval love that yeah, it, he's a little high up. I don't know how to handle this without swearing, so we'll move on. The sex scenes are very <laughs> gratuitous without being gratuitous. Oh, okay, uh, <laughs> so holy moly, I could go on. Um, but do you have any positives? How's your sex life? <laughs> My sex life is just fine. Um, I do actually have some positives. One, this movie makes me smile. I came late to the game. I always heard about this, but because I like so many bad movies, like Showgirls, Plan 9 from Outer Space, I could just go on with some of my favorite bad movies. That when somebody told me, oh, you got to see The Room, I kind of waited, and when I finally saw it, I think I watched it like three times within the first six months because I just enjoyed it so much. But an actual positive, I have to say, although there's question if Tommy Wiseau actually directed a lot of this because there's some people that say they should have got a directing credit because he was concentrating on his acting style, which we will get into later. But I actually thought there was a couple of really impressive shots, not many, but every once in a while, maybe not those scans, I think I could have done those. But there's an actual couple of shots that are quite nifty. Like, I don't want to give away the ending, but near the end, he actually films some stuff. He, he smashes a mirror, and I actually thought it was well placed. Like, you don't see the camera, so that's well placed for me. <laughs> so, But I was surprising because I've seen it so many times now. And this wasn't the last time I'll see it. How many times have you seen it? I thought this was like your first or second. No, I, I said I saw it three times within the first six months that I first saw it. So I think this is about five now. Oh, my. And I'm going to see it in the theater soon. So there's another one. But anyhow, I, I'm actually starting to notice that, yeah, there's actually some good shots in here. Not many, but a couple. So, unfortunately... If you wanting to go for good, I think that's all I have. But my bad stuff is kind of good, so we'll get to that. The negative's so bad that they're good, apparently. So let's start with, like, I already talked about the sex scenes. I'm not going to touch those anymore. Uh, just the, the acting? The acting, if you, <laughs> if you could call it that. <laughs> this is a lot of people's first time <laughs> Like, the acting, acting I, I felt like it was tearing me apart! <laughs> It was just so bad. So bad. Like, I am not an actor by any means, but I feel I could do so much better just by being in front of this camera right here. Right here, you're watching me. I'm acting. But, like, what happened with this movie and the actors? I asked him, did any of these people go on to do anything after this? And we... I think the guy that played no. Mark, Greg Sestero, I think he actually had a couple of bit parts and stuff. And he actually wrote a movie. And he wrote the book, The Disaster Artist. So I he feel... did kind of go on to stuff. I feel the best actor was the guy that showed up for, like, maybe two minutes. <laughs> and he held up Denny on the top of the roof. That's all uh, I'm going to say. Yeah. He was the best actor in this whole movie. Tommy Wiseau is just so awkward. <laughs> just so awkward. Like, all the time. 
all the time. Just so awkward just with the things that he said. <laughs> my favorite line, and I am going to swear here, so I apologize. My favorite line is when uh, he and his girlfriend are <laughs> fighting uh, near the end of the movie, and he's sitting in the bathroom, and she's outside of the bathroom. <laughs> and she goes, come on out, uh, Johnny. And he goes, in a few minutes, bitch. <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> Just, oh, you have to experience it for yourself, the acting. Uh, the biggest problem for me, besides the acting, was uh, surprisingly, you know, okay, I got I got the plot. Eventually, it's about the, this guy and his relationship with this girl. And yes, there's a love triangle there. Easy, easy stuff to follow. But the biggest thing for me that, that really bothered me was like, at the end of the movie, we're talking about the last 20 minutes of the movie. There are still new characters being introduced, <laughs> and we don't even know what their names are. And they start coming onto screen, acting like they're this big presence, as if they've been there for the entire movie. And I'm, I want to be on this person's side with the things that he's saying, but the fact that I have no idea who he is, I'm on the villain's side. I'm like, who are you to lecture this person? So that just really... Yeah, you were obsessed me. with, who is this guy? They don't give him a name, he's just a guest. And even but... in the credits, he was just party goer, like number three or whatever. So, but like, suddenly he no cares idea. at the end of the movie. He apparently does. Apparently it's going to tear up everybody's friendships. Um, I wish, like you said, I wish we had a football so I could throw it right now. But apparently that's just a fun pastime thing that a bunch of grown men do is just go hang out in an alley and toss a football at each other. Yeah, and it's not really football. It's just passing yeah, the just ball. Like they're like... playing ball. They're playing ball. As well, uh, Denny, the character Denny, he's... I, well, he... I can't talk. Like, what is he supposed to be? Is he supposed to be a kid? Is he supposed to be a teenager? Because you said it so many times. He's like, he looks like he's 25. Yeah, they act like he's this orphan child that Johnny wants to adopt one day. That he's like maybe 12. But he's like a 25-year-old college student that is very inappropriate at times. Oh, yeah. And, and just like the subplots that like, get brought <laughs> up and dropped suddenly. Just ridiculously, like... They mention important things. You'd think they'd be important, and then they just drop them by the wayside. Like bringing up Denny, for example. He says something really, really inappropriate to Johnny at one point, and Johnny just goes, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and he doesn't care. Like, just people just flip constantly with their opinions, especially Lisa. Oh, she's. For goodness sakes, you, you <laughs> called her bipolar, and I think you're absolutely correct. Like, Oh, I care about him. I can't stand him anymore. Oh, yeah. But I care about him. Yeah. Oh, but I'm not going to. I can't stand him anymore. I love Mark. I don't like Mark. I can find something better. Like, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. <laughs> the, the You know what? The one redeeming quality, as annoying as she was, the mother. Like, the voice of reason throughout fine, yeah. this whole movie. She was speaking the most sense. She spoke perfect logic, uh, but... She's, again, just the bad acting with her. So I, she doesn't even maintain a positive note on me. And then you said there were some artistic shots. I failed to, to catch on to any of them. I think I was just holding my head like this too much. Maybe that's why. But just... I can't. You gotta watch this movie. <laughs> you gotta watch this movie. Just the, As well, I'm kind of addicted to it, actually. As the... the, the the little soundtrack bit that they were playing whenever they were doing those scans across yeah, the bridge. Yeah, some really good uh, weird choices yeah, weird for like music. they were drinking and there was some little Irish I don't drink. Thing. <laughs> yeah, he's oh drinking all the time and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah so, yeah. Mm. Um, are you done? <laughs> uh, I, it's better to stop now while I still have the chance. <sighs> I will hit on some of the things you said. Tommy Wiseau, you've got to live his acting style. You do. There is no other actor that ever, unless you go like James Franco who does him in The Disaster Artist, but he's got his own style. And I don't even know what it is. He has an accent, but I can't tell you where it's from. Um, it's... You can tell James Dean is one of his favorite actors, and you can also tell that Tennessee Williams is one of his favorite screenwriters because he built this as like a movie, just like those Tennessee Williams movies. No, not even close. 
Uh, but James Dean, he even rips off a, a key line when he does the famous, you're tearing me apart. That's James Dean from Rebel Without a Cause. He just throws Lisa on at the end. But yeah, he's got his own acting style. I All the acting's pretty bad. If I had to pick one that I thought was okay, I thought Mark had moments. Like if he had a good script. A few. But he was maybe kind of good looking, so I kind of like that. I thought the uh, Juliet Danielle, who plays Lisa, uh, she's a very pretty girl. But she's I beautiful. thought I thought that she's beautiful. I, I don't think she was the temptress that they tried to play her to be. You talk, they th everybody in the script agrees with me. She's gorgeous. Yeah, I know. But I I told you when I watched this, I swear it was in her contract <laughs> that she had to have every character say she's either gorgeous, hot, cute, something. I want royalties, by the way. Or I love she's you. She's gorgeous. <laughs> but anyhow, I thought. For a woman that's supposed to be this temptress, I didn't think she had that kind of seductive quality. But I think she nailed the the craziness of <laughs> the thing. But I don't know. I just thought she was kind of, they probably needed someone stronger. But that would say you needed pretty much everything. <laughs> uh, the script, I... How can you say it's a bad script when there's so many memes, uh, so many people quote this movie? Like... There are great movies that don't have quotable lines like this. And Damien's just seen it, and he's quoted so many in this review alone. And I bet you, through the next week or two, he is going to find himself, you know, hi, Dogie, and, you know, just weird little things that if you know the movie, you're giggling <laughs> because you know it's ridiculous, you know? Hi, <laughs> Damien. And you find yourself thinking about it. And... So I've got to give it a kind of, it's a negative, but it's a positive because the script is crap. It's like, it's like they constantly just add subplots. They add characters whenever they need them and they don't care. Like, you know, a thought just occurred to me. There's a, there's a psychologist character that shows up at one point, Peter, yeah. and it, it's, uh, made reference as if he's one of the one of the gang like he's yeah. in there he's in tight he never shows up at the birthday party no i don't think he was he's not in the birthday no. party i just thought about that anyhow there is so many problems with this movie but i have to rate this on a uh when i do give my rating i gotta rate it on my enjoyment level for it and since this is one of those bad movies that are good i'm gonna have to rate it on that basis I'm kind of scared. Oh, do you want me to give my yeah, rating? Because you said scared. I'm. Yeah. I okay. have no idea what he's doing. If I this. was an actual like, if I wanted to be absolutely honest, I would probably give this movie an one and a half. Really? Even this that is, much? Right, a one and a half. Yeah, no, because wow. there was some things. But oh this is because I actually love this movie and I enjoy it so much. I'm actually going to give this, on a cult level, a four. Oh, no! Because oh. it makes me laugh. I love showing it to new people no. because I love seeing their reaction. And I love that I have drilled it into their head now. And even oh. if they hate it, they will remember this movie more than other movies that they enjoyed that I showed them. So I'm going to have to go four on this one. Yeah, I'm giving the room a four. Oh my gosh. But remember, I'm if you're a fan of cult films, I'm rating it a four. So if you're looking for enjoyable cult movies, four. If you're looking for a serious night of thing, one and a half. And yeah. that is very generous. Well, I mean, you could watch it under Tommy Wiseau's own personal opinion of, as a comedy. Then it would definitely serve its purpose for you because it's hilarious all the way through. I don't remember a time where I wasn't laughing except maybe the end because I did not see that coming at all. Um, and that felt kind of... Uh, and I'm just not going to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, it. I still don't know where to begin with this movie. I've said so much about it and <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say. I really don't. Uh, uh, zero. It, it yes, gets a zero. we got our first zero. I knew he was going to do it. It's a zero. Like, I it, nothing. I Nothing at all. We had a good time with it. Oh, absolutely. That's all I know. You know what? 
And that's the thing. That's the thing. I, I had a blast watching this You will movie. watch it again. I know it. <laughs> you will beg me, can we watch The Room? I'll get a nice Blu-ray copy of it. And you'll go, can we watch The Room? I'm going to have Tommy Wiseau postered in my apartment. But I... You'll have a blast watching it. And I definitely... You got to live The Room. You got to live it. So definitely go out and see it because you need to. And that's all I'm going to say about it. But that's about all we can really say about this movie without revealing too much without already like saying what we've already said it's just definitely so unique in its own individual way wouldn't you agree absolutely it's one of a kind one of a kind just like you you're our favorite subscribers thanks so much for joining us comment have you seen the room what do you think about it do you think it's a, a cult masterpiece like he does or do you think it's absolutely trash like i do let us know subscribe so you always know what we're going to be doing next Bye bye Thank you.